There are many different interpretations of what constitutes a Jezebel spirit, ranging from sexual looseness to the teaching of false doctrine, whether by a man or a woman. The Bible does not mention a Jezebel spirit, but it does say a lot about Jezebel herself. The story of Jezebel is told in 1st and 2nd Kings. She was the daughter of Eth Baal, king of Tyre Sidon, and priest of the cult of Baal, a cruel, sensuous, and revolting false god whose worship involved sexual debauchery and lewdness. Ahab, king of Israel, married Jezebel and led the people to worship Baal, 1st Kings 1631. The reign of Ahab and Jezebel over Israel is one of the saddest chapters in the history of God's people. Her name is Phoenician, meant primrose, but in Hebrew, Jezebel meant garbage, and this was how she was known. It was clear that she was using Ahab for her own evil purposes, and he didn't need much convincing. This was the first time that an Israelite king had allied himself through marriage with a heathen princess. The Rule of Jezebel after they married, Jezebel persuaded Ahab to accept Baal, a nature god. As a woman seeking greater power, she sought to eliminate those who dared to question her, and she had the majority of Yahweh's prophets assassinated at her request. She is the first and most powerful catalyst for persecution of God's saints. She went to great lengths to keep idolatry and all its glory around her, guided by no principle, controlled by no fear of either God or man and devoted to her heathen worship. 450 prophets ministered to Baal under her supervision, in addition to 400 prophets from the groves of Asherah, or Astarte, a Phoenician goddess, who ate at her table. Two incidents in Jezebel's life characterize her, and may define what is meant by the Jezebel spirit. One characteristic is her obsessive desire to dominate and control others, especially in the spiritual realm. When she became queen, she launched an all-out campaign to rid Israel of all traces of Yahweh worship. She ordered the annihilation of all the Lord's prophets and the replacement of their altars with those of Baal. 1 Kings 18, 1-4 So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab. Now the famine was severe in Samaria, and Ahab had summoned Obadiah, his palace administrator. Obadiah was a devout believer in the Lord. While Jezebel was killing off the Lord's prophets, Obadiah had taken a hundred prophets and hidden them in two caves, fifty in each, and had supplied them with food and water. 1 Kings 18.13 Haven't you heard, my Lord, what I did while Jezebel was killing the prophets of the Lord? I hid a hundred of the Lord's prophets in two caves, fifty in each, and supplied them with food and water. Her most formidable foe was Elijah, who demanded a battle on Mount Carmel, between the God of Israel and the powers of Jezebel and the priests of Baal, 1 Kings 18. Of course, God triumphed, but despite hearing of the Lord's miraculous powers, Jezebel refused to repent and swore on her gods that she would pursue Elijah relentlessly and slay him. Her obstinate refusal to see and submit to the power of the living God would lead to a horrifying end. 2 Kings 9, 29-37 in the eleventh year of Joram, son of Ahab, Azahiah had become king of Judah. Then Jehu went to Jezreel. When Jezebel heard about it, she put on eye makeup, arranged her hair, and looked out of a window. As Jehu entered the gate, she asked, Have you come in peace, you Zimri, you murderer of your master? He looked up at the window and called out, Who is on my side? Who? Two or three eunuchs looked down at him. Throw her down, Jehu said. So they threw her down, and some of her blood spattered the wall and the horses as they trampled her underfoot. Jehu went in and ate and drank. Take care of that cursed woman, he said, and bury her, for she was a king's daughter. But when they went out to bury her, they found nothing except her skull, her feet, and her hands. They went back and told Jehu, who said, This is the word of the Lord that he spoke through his servant Elijah the Tishbite. On the plot of ground at Jezreel, dogs will devour Jezebel's flesh. Jezebel's body will be like dung on the ground in the plot of Jezreel, so that no one will be able to say, this is Jezebel. The second incident involves a righteous man named Naboth, who refused to sell land adjacent to the palace to Ahab, correctly declaring that selling his inheritance would be against the Lord's command. 1 Kings 21.3, Leviticus 25.23 while Ahab sulked and fumed on his bed, Jezebel mocked and mocked him for his weakness, 
then proceeded to frame and stone the innocent Naboth to death. 1 Kings 21, 1-29 Some time later, there was an incident involving a vineyard belonging to Naboth the Jezreelite. The vineyard was in Jezreel, close to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Ahab said to Naboth, Let me have your vineyard to use for a vegetable garden, since it is close to my palace. In exchange, I will give you a better vineyard, or, if you prefer, I will pay you whatever it is worth. But Naboth replied, The Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my ancestors. So Ahab went home sullen and angry because Naboth the Jezreelite had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my ancestors. He lay on his bed sulking and refused to eat. His wife Jezebel came in and asked him, Why are you so sullen? Why won't you eat? He answered her, Because I said to Naboth the Jezreelite, Sell me your vineyard, or if you prefer, I will give you another vineyard in its place. But he said, I will not give you my vineyard. Jezebel his wife said, Is this how you act as king over Israel? Get up and eat. Cheer up. I'll get you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, placed his seal on them, and sent them to the elders and nobles who lived in Naboth's city with him. In those letters she wrote, Proclaim a day of fasting and seat Naboth in a prominent place among the people, but seat two scoundrels opposite him, and have them bring charges that he has cursed both God and the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. So the elders and nobles who lived in Naboth's city did as Jezebel directed in the letters she had written to them. They proclaimed a fast and seated Naboth in a prominent place among the people. Then two scoundrels came and sat opposite him and brought charges against Naboth before the people, saying, Naboth has cursed both God and the king. So they took him outside the city and stoned him to death. Then they sent word to Jezebel, Naboth has been stoned to death. As soon as Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned to death, she said to Ahab, Get up and take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, that he refused to sell you. He is no longer alive but dead. When Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, he got up and went down to take possession of Naboth's vineyard. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, Go down to meet Ahab king of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He is now in Naboth's vineyard, where he has gone to take possession of it. Say to him, This is what the Lord says, Have you not murdered a man and seized his property? Then say to him, This is what the Lord says, In the place where dogs licked up Naboth's blood, dogs will lick up your blood. Yes, yours. Ahab said to Elijah, So you have found me, my enemy. I have found you, he answered, because you have sold yourself to do evil in the eyes of the Lord. He says, I am going to bring disaster on you. I will wipe out your descendants and cut off from Ahab every last male in Israel, slave or free. I will make your house like that of Jeroboam, son of Nabot, and that of Baasha, son of Ahijah, because you have aroused my anger and have caused Israel to sin. And also concerning Jezebel, the Lord says, Dogs will devour Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Dogs will eat those belonging to Ahab who die in the city, and the birds will feed on those who die in the country. There was never anyone like Ahab, who sold himself to do evil in the eyes of the Lord, urged on by Jezebel his wife. He behaved in the vilest manner by going after idols, like the Amorites the Lord drove out before Israel. When Ahab heard these words, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and fasted. He laid in sackcloth and went around meekly. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. Have you noticed how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself, I will not bring this disaster in this day, but I will bring it on his house in the days of his son. Naboth's sons were also stoned to death ensuring that there would be no heirs and that the land would revert to the king's possession. The Jezebel spirit is categorized by such a single-minded determination to have one's way, no matter who is destroyed in the process. Jezebel's sexual immorality and idolatry were so infamous that the Lord Jesus himself mentions her in a warning to the church at Thyatira. Revelation 2, 18-29 To the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These are the words of the Son of God whose eyes are like blazing fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your deeds, your love and faith, your service and perseverance, and that you are now doing more than you did at first. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet. 
By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is unwilling. So I will cast her on a bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely, unless they repent of her ways. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am he who searches hearts and minds, and I will repay each of you according to your deeds. Now I say to the rest of you in Thyatira, to you who do not hold to her teaching and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets, I will not impose any other burden on you, except to hold on to what you have until I come. To the one who is victorious and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. That one will rule them with an iron scepter and will dash them to pieces like pottery, just as I have received authority from my father. I will also give that one the morning star. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Jesus declares to the Thyatirans that she is not to be tolerated, most likely referring to a woman in the church who influenced it the same way Jezebel influenced Israel into idolatry and sexual immorality. Whoever this woman was, she, like Jezebel, refused to repent of her immorality and false teaching, sealing her fate. The Lord Jesus cast her, along with those who had committed idolatry with her, into a sickbed. Those who succumb to a Jezebel spirit will always die and be destroyed, both physically and spiritually. The Jezebel spirit is perhaps best defined as anyone who acts in the same way that Jezebel did, engaging in immorality, idolatry, false teaching, and unrepentant sin. Going beyond that is speculation, which can lead to false accusations and division within the body of Christ. Mari ikut Yesus. Mari ke jalan yang benar. Tuhan berkati.